Welcome back to another episode of Do It Prove It. Today here on the channel, I'm gonna give the gun a little bit of cleaning, so might as well I just give you guys a review of it. And this is what I pretty much use to take out possums, pigeons, pretty much everything that I hunt. I once shot an armadillo with it right to the head, dead on the spot. So starting at the front of the gun, we got the suppressor. It is made from two inch PVC pipe. It pretty much runs all the way to the end of the barrel. And I got like five buffaloes inside. It's just a slip on, slip on and slip off. So you can see, slip on, slip off. It makes the gun extremely quiet. So first we're gonna do a, a five pump shot without the suppressor or the moderator, whatever you wanna call it, silencer. Maybe that was five or four, I'm not sure, but just take a listen. Yeah, that's an extremely loud crack. And this is dry fire, so there's nothing inside of it. There's no ammunition inside. And hear the difference. Huge difference, right? Yeah. So, set this to the side. I got the Brashka 3 to 9 by 40 scope. And I got a little bit of accessory ring on it. That way I sometimes put my GoPro. I add a light. And that's just about it. You can go as far as even adding a laser to it. Daisy 880, the extremely powerful compared to what it used to be back in the days. I did a bit of modification to it, so I'm gonna show you guys pretty much everything that I did. Let's just get the scope out first. Hope you guys are seeing really good. I know the sun is shooting in at that angle, but I gotta work with it. Don't have the entire day to do this, so now that the scope is off, like I said, it's a 3 to 9 by 40. I don't know how well you guys can see, but you just gotta take my word for it. And now that we got that out of the way, I think what I'm gonna do now is start removing the the shell. So firstly, firstly, I like to start at the at the front. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where you start. Just once you put the screws back where they are supposed to go, All right? And just work your way down. And something you got to you got to keep in mind. The screw to the top here is just a little bit longer than the one below. Because if you put this longer one below, you're pretty much going to punch the tube that is inside. So try to keep that in mind. We're going to continue. Removing the screws. And that's just all that I'm doing. Just removing screws. So we're not down to the meat of the matters yet. And if you're visiting the channel for the first time, Welcome to the channel. Hope to see you again. Okay, got that out of the way. Pretty much I can just go ahead and remove the shell right here, but I pretty much just like to get all the screws out first. So I'm gonna flip the gun. And again, I'm gonna start at the front of the gun. Start removing the screws. All right. I've done a lot of modification to it, so no worries. Okay, so right now I don't think I have the gun cocked, so I'm gonna have to cock the gun just because I don't want to break this little pellet loader. Okay, nice. Right, and what I like to do from here now, grab myself a flat, and right by the trigger guard, you just give it a little twist. And it start pushing apart. And that's that's just about it. You can go ahead now and start removing your parts. It doesn't you don't have to do it exactly like how I did it, but that's just my way. That's just my way of doing it. Give it a little shake. Try not to make this little part. Well, it's gonna fall out at one point, but try not to lose it. Flip it to the other side. Got this part off. And now for the easy part. Not so easy, but hey, right. And the reason why 
get the box stuck out let me explain something to you guys now the reason why you saw me cock the gun a little bit earlier if the gun was already you know uncocked yeah as cocky as that song <laughs> this would have broke entirely off right so you got to cock it get it out of the way that way it's not in the loading chamber when you lift the the side side piece off right and you can go as far as taking this off it's just a little wiggle wiggle not much just a little wiggle wiggle and it's out right pretty much everything is gonna be dismantled and we're gonna give it a, a nice clean so now from here you can see there's a little bit of tape action going on here the reason being is that a lot of gas used to seep out right at this point so i pretty much just use some electrical tape and a little bit of plumber's tape to seal it off and that that actually worked gives us more power because this used to just slide in well that's how it's made to just slide in at one point i pretty much give it some treads but that wasn't working too properly so yeah and we're gonna just slip slip it out and if you realize the barrel comes out with the um what do you call this is it the shroud <laughs> I, I don't think it's a shroud but yeah pretty much you can say a shroud but it doesn't does much okay so now that we get it out of the, the shroud let's just set that aside i got the barrel here again and you can see there's a little bit of tape action going on here also another gasket that is to seal this off while the suppressor is on that way the gas will not escape and come back through this and create a loud a loud crack okay so barrel out of the way shroud out of the way we're almost to the heart of the gun and this is the most challenging part to it but it's pretty simple when you get it down so it's already cocked we're just gonna unload it and it have a nice safety feature without without the magazine loader going up forward it's not gonna or pretty much let me just say the bolt without the bolt facing forward the trigger is not gonna go off so the reason for that is just because this little pin it creates a little clip to the front so when the the bolt is slide forward it pushes down and you can bang so let's just get that off open this let's pressure on the spring on the pins and you pop it up from the bottom and you just lift it out same same deal for the for the front one yeah and while doing this be very careful because these rollers they actually fall right off they're held in by a, a little pin short and stubby set that to the side as well so let's get to the heart of the gun right here now that you already removed we're just gonna slide this back it's just that simple and you can see right here I also made a bit of modification to this area right here it used to be a little narrow slot and I just made it wider that way more air gets in so when this is back here a lot more air gets in compresses and right in this little chamber here the gas gets compressed and stored and as you pull the trigger this little lever actually falls down not this pin back and all the gases escapes through the barrel pushing the projectile and pretty much gives you a, a kill shot all right so let's take this off it's just a tube aluminum tube everything here is just pretty much aluminum except for the pins the pins are, are metal or steel right so we're gonna remove the trigger and the first thing you're gonna do when removing the trigger is to make sure it's make sure it's uncocked 
because when it's cocked there's a lot of pressure under the spring if you push the pins out it's just gonna fly so make sure it's uncocked set it off and I have a, a pin remover <laughs> just a, a small screwdriver with with no function basically it's just a flathead you're just gonna push on the pin and sometimes if you do push on the pin and you see it's not going through that's because one of the end for this pin is actually grooved you're not gonna see it but you're gonna feel it so if it's not going through on one end push it to the other end and try and keep a little bit of tension on the trigger still so we're just gonna do that got the pin I hope the sun is giving you a little bit of light to sh show you guys the groove and you got the smooth end so just set that to the side and you can see my screwdriver is pretty much holding the trigger in place so what you're gonna do is grab some more tension or put a little bit of pressure over it and just slide it now it's gonna pop right out you got your spring try not to lose it your trigger and we got one more pin to remove that's from the the lever that hits the the gas chamber or the gas storage unit and what i like to do from here this one doesn't slide out as smooth as the the one for the trigger maybe grab yourself some pliers and just yank on it that is out and two of these things are going to fall out this is the one that hits the chamber that make the gases escape and this is a little safety feature once the once the bolt is not pushed forward it's not gonna fire we're down to the meat of the business so this right here is a, another spring mechanism as the air compresses in the tube by the lever by the hand lever this comes back and let the gas inside of this chamber All right we're going to remove that as well so you guys are going to get to see how that is done try to be very careful try not to damage your o-ring so you're going to push back on it push on the pin and it's going to fall right out and don't worry about mixing these up because it's a little bit shorter than everything else and if i go ahead and just remove my finger really quick it's just going to pop off so just slowly release the pressure and there you have it it's comprised of three parts and you can go as far as removing your o-ring take your time try not to try not to damage the o-ring in the process right okay nice and easy that is off time to get to the the chamber and the chamber sometimes it's best to use a a bird beak pliers but normally i just go for a, a flat right uh, you can even use your thumb and take it out because there's no pressure inside of it watch out for this little o-ring as well inspect it to make sure that it's not damaged or anything and there you have it the gun fully disassembled all the all the inners so from here now i'm just gonna give everything a nice a nice clean I know it's looking a little bit clean but hey sometimes a little bit of particles dust sand gets inside of it but i try my best to keep my gun as clean as possible so right now we're gonna clean it up and fit it back together you guys are gonna see i'm gonna take a few shots with it and pretty much just make sure it's sided in and we're good to go so i'm gonna do a little bit of cleaning got my rag yeah and sometimes i just like to start from the heart of the gun because this is the heart of the gun basically all right give it a nice clean where the o-rings sit it's gonna get a little hard to get in some of the cracks but you're gonna find a way how to do it grab myself oh man i keep grabbing this Phillips screwdriver yeah grab a flat the flat would do less damage if anything and just work your way nice and easy no no rush no rush no rush no rush and you can get this as 
thick as it can fit and just take your time and just give it a nice clean the same goes for the inside of the chamber try not to damage where the where the o-ring sit All right got that clean and this is my other trick work it and you just spin it on the inside gives it gives a deeper clean right but that's just about it for there and set that to the side we're gonna start with the rest parts nice and slow no rush try not to scruff this up because if this is damaged you're gonna get a you're gonna get a leak so there's so much parts that can go wrong on on this gun it's not even it's not even funny but once you know what you're doing you're gonna you're gonna get it done in real time I'm gonna give this a little wipe as well sometimes there's little sand and grease inside here give it a little wipe wipe too because everything is gonna be re-oiled re-greased whatever you want to use you can use oil you can use grease just don't use too much too much grease or too much oil because you're gonna have a problem when it comes to to your point of impact it's gonna shift 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 until the oil is pretty much out of the barrel okay so that's that's just about it we're gonna we're gonna start fitting the rifle back together you're gonna want a little bit of lube not much try not to to put as much on it all right just make sure that it is nice and and lube okay and you're gonna start and this you don't need no you don't need no tools to put it back in but i would recommend using a a bird beak pliers but you can just use your thumb and just pretty much just twist it twist it into place easy as that right let's make sure that it's seated properly give it a little wiggle to the side and just line it up and that's just about it we're gonna okay i'm gonna need this so i'm gonna put this back right there and this is gonna go back onto this grab your spring right and before you do all of that try to put on back your your o-ring again a little bit of lube just enough to slide it slide it over easy try not to damage it in the process okay so that's on you're gonna grab this now and you're gonna line up the pinhole grab your pin remember that's the shortest one make sure it's lined up get it in All right get it in and try to try to equal it up you know All right all the loop from my fingers is just doing the work okay now that we got that on we're gonna take care of the trigger and you're gonna go with this little safety mechanism first All right simpler it's just gonna go back in the way that it came out right okay so mine is giving me just a little bit of a problem so i'm gonna adjust it a little bit not much just a little bit all right and we're gonna go facing down all right that's what you're looking for grab your this pretty much acts as a hammer yeah the names are the names are on <laughs> on the internet so if you really want to find out the names you can just go go over to daisy find daisy parts and simple so this one is going to take a little bit to i pretty much just like to tap it in make sure it's lined up though don't do like me make sure that it's lined up first before you start yanking at it Okay. 
that's in. Both of them in. Grab your trigger. And something I failed to mention about my trigger a little bit earlier. This used to carry a, a offset. I file it down pretty much to run with the smoothness of the trigger. And it improved it improved the, the trigger pull significantly. It's probably like four pounds now compared to what it used to be. Probably like seven pounds. It's like four, maybe four or five pounds now. It's not gonna take much off, but hey, it actually took some off for me. And you're gonna put it face down. Try to line up that that little pin. All right? And once you get it in, that's just about it. And from here, what I like to do, I don't think I don't think you have to do it this way, but what I like to do is after I get that in, right? Set it. Pretty much what I'm gonna do is just put the spring. But you gotta be really careful when you're doing this. So just set the spring in place, pull back on it, and drop your other and drop your other pin in. And that's it. Everything is back. Everything is back to to normal. Right? And you're good to go. Push forward, bam. Right? So maybe give it a little tap, make sure it's flush, and you're on your way. Grab my tube, already clean. Again, just a little bit of a lube, just to be sure, right? We're gonna lube it just a little bit. Create less friction, and we're just gonna pop it in. It's gonna take a little effort to do it, but it's in, All right? Try to line that up. Okay, I'm good with that, comfortable. And that and it's pretty much back into the to the housing slide it in grab your pin that way all good set you need this now grab that grab your pin line it up make sure it's in and you're gonna go one two hold them in place until you until you got them into the into the slide okay so that is in grab your other pin and i like to put both of my pins from the same direction that way they're not gonna fall out set it down what's next back to the the side piece I'm gonna put back in this bolt simple and easy in and you're gonna look for this little slot it's gonna go over and clip that's just about it for there so from this point it's back to the barrel got the shroud if that's what you want to call it a shroud got the barrel slide this back in a little bit of effort is needed <sighs> got that okay and this is just gonna slide right back into place nice i got the buttstock the buttstock is just gonna slide right back into place as well and from here you can go ahead and put on your your four end grips so maybe grab that one grab the screw for it and just put it into place right doesn't have to be tight just put it into place grab your required that's what I'm talking about always fall out <laughs> and grab the right screw for it set it into place as well Okay, that way you can flip it now and repeat the process on the following side. 
I pretty much just like to take my time when I'm dealing with this gun because it's not a, a gun that can take much roughing up or toss around like some of the other robust guns. So you're gonna cock it, put it in the cocking position because it's already cocked and back forward a little bit. And there you go, grab your other screw and you're just gonna screw that back. All right, and from here now, don't forget this. Simpler, just snaps into place, and then you're gonna add the screws. So, from here, I'm just gonna add all the screws that are needed. All right, and I'm gonna do them one at a time. Give them a nice torque. Not not much, not much of a torque, but just a nice, nice torque. Give this one another torque. And the longer screws, this goes to the top. You can't you can't miss them. Just try and remember where you remove them and you're good to go. And I was mentioning to you guys earlier the long their shot is right, but the longer ones, they gotta go to the top. One is just a little bit longer than the other, like by a few mils or so. And that pretty much holds it into place. Set the shorter one. Flip it. And you can go ahead and repeat the process. Putting in the screws. Today's a really nice day. Yesterday there was so much rain. I wanted to do this review yesterday. Well, this takedown yesterday. <laughs> But so much rain, try not to forget to twerk anything. Make sure they twerk. You can go ahead and double check. Make sure they well twerk. Right here is your loading chamber. That's for your BBs. You can put up to 50 BBs inside, but it's been a while since I've shot BBs, mostly pellets. And working so what you're gonna do from here now give it a, a few drops of oil I did I forget to mention that I punched this hole just a little bit bigger so that way more air gets in and yeah more more dirt and thing gets into but like I said I take very good care of my rifle so there's no need for me to worry about the dirt and all of that but sometimes you know stuff happens and that's it Got your suppressor, like I said, just slip on, slip off, and you're pretty much good to go. Any direction you slip it on, it's just gonna work. Either way, it doesn't matter. So, that was with the, without the suppressor. Now you can hear the difference. Nice. I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add the scope back to it. And that is pretty much it for the for the review clean of my Daisy 880. So I'm shooting these pellets 0.177 caliber. These are H and N. I think Barracuda match. Yeah, Barracuda match. They're 10.65 grains somewhere across there but they work extremely good I, i've got no scope on yo i've got no scope on but you can actually hear the crack nice